Will Day from Hawthorne is in doubt for round one. The AFL is now suddenly withholding player weights from fans. And Joel Smith from Melbourne has been caught hitting the bags. But he's no boxer. This is True Footy News. We'll be back after this. Now to start off this little off-season update, it is not often that I find myself agreeing wholeheartedly with a hot take from Kane Corns, but uh, I have to say today is the day. This comes in light of Corns on SEN Afternoons, relaying the information that the AFL now has a policy not to disclose player weights. Reportedly, the AFL has decided that in this day and age, it is inappropriate for weights to be a public matter in publications like the Season Guide. It is now considered private information and is not appropriate for publication. Kane Corns basically responded to this and said, the world has gone so soft that I can't believe it. And to be honest, I have to agree, I'm kind of at a loss as to why this is happening. Now, I generally don't fully understand, is this an extension of the whole body positivity movement? Corns also points out that in 2021, the AFL banned prospective draftees from getting their skin folds done at the draft combine for mental health reasons and treading carefully with a younger generation. That is news to me. I had not heard that before. Body positivity as a concept is a little complicated. I understand that as a society, there's, there's a lot of mental health issues associated with people, you know, comparing themselves to what other people look like and subsequently feeling worse. But there is a point where it becomes a little bit absurd, right? And this is where I agree with Kane Corns in that a player's weight is pretty material to his role as a footballer. The example that Corns uses is that uh, hypothetically, if he's commentating an AFL game and Jake Lever is playing on Ch uh, Charlie Kerno, it is now, I suppose, inappropriate for a start, but also somewhat impossible for him to comment on the fact that Charlie Kerno is eight kilos heavier than Jake Lever and in theory would have a size advantage. That's fairly relevant, I think. And, and as a fan, I know that we probably don't look at weights that much, but one thing that I like to do is each and every offseason, especially Especially when you've got like a young team that's sort of doing its second, third pre-seasons as a playing group, I kind of like to see how much weight certain players have gained. Because it kind of indicates like, to what extent are they ready for AFL level? Are they 84 kilos or are they 90 kilos and ready to mix it with the best midfielders? I think that's relevant. I know that I'm probably a bit more of a uh, AFL sycophant. And I realize that 95% of people don't really care. And even those that say they care probably won't actually look up weights often enough for this to be a real thing. But for me, it's, it's kind of just like the logic piece. Like how did we we get here. This decision by the AFL to not reveal player weights due to mental health reasons, I assume that's the connective link here. That must have been based on some feedback. So is there really some voice in the from the AFL Players Association who have come to the AFL and said, we no longer want this stuff published? That to me is hard to get my head around. And again, like I don't, I'm probably coming off a callous here, but I do agree that is kind of soft. Like I said, player weights are somewhat material to um, how the AFL is played. And skin folds as well is another one. You know, clubs and recruiters need to know sort of what condition is a given player in? Where can they improve? It absolutely is relevant. As fans, I get we probably don't need to know. Like I get it. Most of us are probably going to not even notice if those weights are not published anymore. But for me, it's kind of the principle of it. I think it's it's odd. And the other question is like, where does it go next? Like if it's, if it's already taboo to talk about players' weights and, you know, for context, these players are already like elite athletes. They're Look better than 99% of us. But does that mean we're heading towards a future where it's kind of taboo to talk about a player's height? Because this is just my perspective. I could be wrong, but I do feel like out of at least the men that I know in my life, men are more likely to be self-conscious about their height than their body weight. So are we going towards a future where we can't tell if a player is true key position height because it is, uh, you know, suddenly taboo and immoral to publish how tall they are? I don't know. I think this is a case of the AFL going a little bit too far. In other news, Will Day has returned to training with the Hawthorne Footy Club for, I think it was the first day of pre-season, completed some run-throughs, and unfortunately, after a few scans, they've picked up that the 22-year-old has a fracture in his foot and will need to be off legs for a little bit. This sucks. As a neutral, I like watching Will Day play Play. And, you know, it does sound like there is a good chance he's not going to be available for round one. And I, I, from the outside looking in, I suppose, you know, Hawthorne aren't really necessarily going to be pushing for finals this year. They might get a little bit close. So in terms of their immediate, you know, finals hopes or anything like that, it's probably not too much of a blow. But at the same time, when you're a young up and coming side, and I can relate as an Eagles fan, you want to see your young guns playing and get experience. So this is a bit of a shame, but hopefully he's back before too long in season 2024. Next, we'll talk about what has been a pretty big story in Joel Smith from the Melbourne Football Club being uh, provisionally banned for having cocaine found in his urine sample. So to be clear, the 27-year-old was provisionally suspended by the AFL in October last year after he allegedly returned a urine sample after the round 23 game that had a positive test of cocaine in his system. 
So for anyone not aware, this is quite a serious thing because if I'm not mistaken, because he's tested positive on game day, this is seen as more of a performance enhancing scenario than simply just someone taking illicit drugs. In fact, athletes who test positive to cocaine during competition face bans of up to four years according to Sports Integrity Australia. So I read that Smith and the Melbourne Football Club had previously been hopeful that this ban would just be three months. And the reason that is, is because in 2021, there was a new rule introduced where a shorter ban is given out if they can prove the substance was used out of competition and that its use was unrelated to sporting performance. I'm not really sure how you do that after the fact. But the article says because the substance was found in his body during an in-competition test, so game day, he may have trouble using this argument and that makes sense. So this is a tricky one. So I actually looked it up and cocaine can be detected in your urine up to four days after taking it. So to be clear, Smith has probably taken it in the four days preceding this game. First of all, feel real good about having that in my search history. Second of all, if we're talking about a player who's doing cocaine into the lead up of, a, of an AFL game day, like all jokes aside, we're probably talking about someone who has a legitimate problem here. That is bizarre. Common sense tells me Joel Smith hasn't taken cocaine to try and enhance his performance. Now, I wouldn't know, but I'm going to speculate and say that someone doing cocaine, you know, whether it be the night before, probably isn't actually in a position to play better. And the irony is, I, I know he played pretty well in the final series, but I'm not an expert, but I'm going to guess that his cocaine t usage was not to try and enhance his game day performance, but probably because he was in his mind trying to have some fun in the lead up to a game, which I think is alarming. But either way, we're potentially looking at the end of his career because it could be anywhere between two and four years. I don't have any insights as to whether it's going to be two or four. I think we can rule out it being less than two because if you tested positive on game day, it's going to be very, very hard to prove that you were just having fun and not trying to use it as a performance enhancer, even though my gut feeling is that is the case. Regardless, the rules are in place. So I I think he's kind of up shit creek without a paddle. Anyway, guys, that is my bite-sized update of what is happening in the AFL world. I'm thinking of maybe doing these a little bit more as the off-season progresses. We are very close to the preseason tournament kicking off, or at least in my head. It's still about a month, but you know, I'm counting down the days. But let me know in the comments what you think about all these stories. Hope you're enjoying the content, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.